I'd like to thank everybody for coming out to the event this afternoon. I want to tell you a little bit about the start of our campaign and begin by uh, introducing myself. My name is Junius Rodriguez. Uh, as of 16 days ago, I became the Democratic nominee for U.S. Congress in the 18th Illinois Congressional District. Uh, today is the official launch of our campaign. This is our third event that we have held. Uh, we started at 9 o'clock this morning in Eureka. We were in uh, Lincoln at noon, and we're here in McDonough County today. And uh, this is going to be the last event today. We, we head home after this. We are uh, running in a district that was purposefully designed to be a very red district, a very safe, conservative, Republican district. And I think there are many who would imagine that this is a district that will always be in the hands of the Republican Party. I don't think anybody can make that claim this time. I don't think anybody can make that claim this year. We're looking at a different electoral climate than we've ever seen in our lifetimes. The conventional wisdom can be thrown out the window. Nothing that we think works seems to be working this time around. Now, I'm running against Darren LaHood, who's the incumbent congressman. He's been in the position since September, about eight months or so that he's been there. Uh, he's running for his first, two, uh, first full two-year term. One of the things that I'd like to say right from the start is this is not a campaign where I have personal animosity against Darren LaHood. Uh, as far as I know, he's, he's a fine man. And, and I respect his willingness to, to be involved in public life, to be involved in public service. It's an important uh, job that individuals have to be willing to take on. My concern with the congressman has to do with the positions that he has taken over the years, the positions that the Republican Party has held for the past generation. And I believe that the congressman needs to defend his positions, defend the policies of the Republican Party, and explain why those policies are necessarily in the best interests of working people, poor people, people who are struggling here in the 18th Illinois. One of the things that we intend to do is to debate the congressman on every possible opportunity that we get. We want him to defend point by point his positions. We're willing to go toe to toe with the congressman on this and on this point we'll be relentless. You can't govern with photo ops and sound bites only. You have to explain what's in your gut. You have to explain what you stand for. And standing for the conveyor belt of incumbency, standing for having a million dollar war chest that can support you in any campaign, standing on the likelihood that we see the foundations of a new Republican dynasty forming here in central Illinois. Those ideas may well have worked in previous election cycles. I don't think that anyone running for Congress this time around can assume that the same process will be functional, will, will be working. And so we intend to run an issues-based campaign, a campaign that is rooted in what is going to be in the best interest of serving the residents of this district. Now we're here in McDonough County, and you know I, I don't know how familiar you all are, but I, I'm a history professor, and I've actually taught some courses in history of the uh, state of Illinois. And one of the things that I learned a bit back is that in the early 1970s, this part of the state had an interesting episode of secession, <laughs> or attempted secession. Uh, so we are here in the heart of Forgottonia. <laughs> in fact, yeah. we, on, on the drive over here, we passed near the capital of Forgottonia, coming here to, uh, to Macomb. One of the things that we must remember in all seriousness is that in the modern economy, no area can, be, can deserve to be forgotten. No one deserves to be marginalized. Everyone should have an opportunity for success in America, success that is going to be determined by your willingness to work hard, to struggle, to do what you have to do, but you should be able to make it if you're willing to engage in the process. Each one of us has been brought up believing that in America, that dream of American opportunity is you work hard and you'll find success. Truth of the matter is we know much better than that. We live in a society today where individuals working at minimum wage jobs might well be working full time, but they're never getting ahead. We live in a society today where minimum wage is not a living wage. We also live in a society today where we don't see an equality of opportunity for the ability to rise. Uh, we were speaking this morning in Eureka, and one of the comments that I made there is that during the economic downturn that we saw back in 2008, we experienced a tremendous sense 
of shared sacrifice, where everyone sort of pitched in and did their part. Everyone did what they had to do because we were struggling at that time. And now we're starting to see the beginnings of growth. We're starting to see you know, job creation overall. We're starting to see an improvement in, uh, in economic stats, but it's very much uneven. It's not across the board, and certainly in this district, it's not all the counties in this district that are experiencing that. And so one of the things that we need to do in this campaign, one of our highest priorities must be jobs, jobs, jobs. We need to make sure that we can create opportunities for individuals to find success in their communities, to find work. I had conversations with individuals a few weeks ago, some, some grandparents who were very, very concerned because they see their grandkids going off to school and leaving the small towns that they live in. We see communities that are constantly being hollowed out. One of the ways that we can change that is by making sure that we leverage the assets that we have, utilize the resources that we have, provide modern technology so that jobs and training can be made available to people where they are, so they can find jobs where they are, so that our communities can survive. One of the things that we want to do, uh, and, and I've made this one of my priority issues in the campaign, we can create jobs here in the counties of Western Illinois through infrastructure projects, through highway and bridge, improvements in development, and a new initiative in particular. Let me explain that one. Uh, many of you might well be aware that when Interstate 72 was first proposed many years ago, the concept of Interstate 72 was that it was going to run across central Illinois, it was also going to run across northern Missouri, and it was going to connect with the Kansas City area. Now, today Interstate 72 runs to Quincy Hannibal area, sort of stops, dead ends there. It was never completed across northern Missouri. Just imagine for a second the economic benefit that the western counties of Illinois would accrue if Interstate 72 was completed across northern Missouri. Jobs in terms of building the project, jobs in the aggregate industry, but at the same time, imagine how many new jobs, how many small businesses could be established in that corridor if you had an amazing amount of traffic that was crossing right through this particular region. Now, we can do that sort of thing if members of Congress are willing to work with others, work across party lines, to make people realize that this is a growth potential, a jobs creation program for this area that can be tremendous in its capacity to create opportunity. Uh, by the way, the congressman who serves the Northern Missouri District currently serves on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee of the House. So I would imagine that he would be quite supportive of such a project. And if the congressman of the 18th Illinois lent his support, and if other congressmen from the state of Illinois realize that this benefits Chicago-St. Louis in the long run because you're alleviating traffic congestion in those areas as well, there's potential job creation that's built into this. Now that's not a revolutionary kind of concept. All it takes is looking at a map and trying to think with a sense of visionary thinking, analytical reasoning, how do you put things in place that can make a difference. One of the things that we hope to do in this campaign, starting within two weeks, is we will be releasing a new policy statement each week. We'll be putting this out on our social media sites, on our website. We'll also be sending this to media throughout the district. Uh, if we do this from the beginning of June until the time of the election in November, we'll have an opportunity to put 20 proposals out there. I would imagine in the time that we put 20 proposals out, Congressman Hood will probably put out none. But we will be arguing this campaign on the basis of policy, on the basis of ideas, on the basis of what we can do to make a difference in this community. Now we know that it's been a long time that the Republican Party has held this seat. In, in the county where I reside, in Woodford County, it's exactly 100 years. You have to go all the way back to 1916 when you had a, the, the last Democratic congressman, a fellow named Claudius Ulysses Stone, who, by the way, was an educator. There's a pattern here. 100 year cycle. 100 year cycle. Sort of like the locust, yeah. the, the very slow locust. In other parts of the district, it's been 50 years that the Republican Party has dominated this seat. One of the ideas that I would put forward is this. No single party can claim to have a monopoly on the ideal policy issues 
for any particular district for 50 years, much less the 100. No party can claim to have a monopoly on putting forward the best and the most ideal candidates in every election cycle, and we know that because we have at least a two-year memory. No party should be able to claim superiority over another in that context. One of the things that I'm doing is I'm running as a centrist Democrat. I'm running as a person who says it's possible to work across the aisle. And in my lifetime, I've made every effort to try to bring people together, to find common cause. Several people have asked me why I'm running for office. In fact, in a very passionate way. Why in the world <laughs> are you running for office? Why would anybody want to do this? And I think the easy answer to that is I'm not satisfied with what I'm seeing today in terms of how our government is functioning. We have a Congress that has proven itself dysfunctional through the years. The approval rating of 12% would attest to that. But at the same time, while the Congress itself seems to be a little bit dysfunctional, let's turn that around. If we keep re-electing people simply because of the power of incumbency, because we believe that wealth and class and privilege automatically means that the best people will serve, we have become a part of that problem. We have become the enablers of that dysfunctional system. So one of the things that we're doing in this campaign, and we're starting this today, we are going to contest this election in all 19 counties of this district. We will not, uh, we will make sure that we don't miss a single county in, in our campaign. Second thing is we're going to run an issues-oriented campaign. This is not going to be about personalities. It's not going to be about the typical noise that you find in politics. And every single opportunity that we get to debate Darren LaHood, we look forward to that opportunity because I think that we can hold our own in that particular conversation. Now, if any of your baseball fans you remember old Satchel Page, who once said, you know, don't look back, something might be gaining on you. I'm sure that right now Darren LaHood is probably resting pretty comfortable that he can make his way toward re-election. He's going to amass a war chest to fight this campaign. Uh, millions, you know, I'd, I'd estimate three to one what we can potentially raise in this district. And he's probably going to assume that whatever has worked in the past will work this time around. But I think he needs to rethink that. I think he needs to realize that if you are an establishment politician, if you are the son of a dynasty, if you are the country club and the chamber of commerce candidate, how are you going to make that work this time around? How's that going to work for you, Darren? If you look up establishment candidate, you'll probably see a reference that says C. La Hood. <laughs> we want him to defend why his policies are going to be the best for this district. And to challenge that, we will put forward our policies. We'll make these available on our website. We have a website that went online today, uh, www.rodriguezcongress.com. We also have social media sites, Facebook sites, and Twitter. Uh, the name for both of those is 18, the number 18THIL, 18THIL on Facebook and Twitter. Would encourage you to follow us there. We know that this is going to be an uphill battle. We know that this is going to be one of those proverbial David and Goliath events, but guess what? We have something on our side. More stones. We're going to keep challenging them every opportunity, point by point, to explain why their policies are best and why ours would not work. And trust me, by the time November rolls around, we will have sufficient policy statements out there on a variety of issues where the people of the district can certainly weigh their options. Thank you so much for coming out today. Appreciate you being here.